Testing, testing, one, two, three. Good? Okay, great. Good morning, everybody. Cool. 
Uh, why don't you stand with us? We're going to worship the Lord this morning. Um, but before we do that, <clears throat> sorry, uh, let me just pray for us. Um, yeah. So bow your heads and pray with me. Father God, thank you for this chapel. Thank you for everybody who's here, God. Thank you for creating an opportunity such as this. God, um, help us to uh, just dwell in gratitude this week um, with all the stresses that are, are happening, everything that is um, seeming to happen all at once, God, with assignments and and rules and all of these things, Father, just, just calm us and help us to um, just submit submit to you humbly and um, yeah, be thankful for your faithfulness um, because it is great, Lord. Uh, so bless this worship and um, help us to draw closer to you today. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I Great is thy faithfulness. 
There's a place. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the At the cross, I surrender my life. I owe all of you. I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you. I owe all to you. sin and shame are powerless. Where my heart has peace with God and forgiveness. Where all the love I've ever found
Thank you, worship team. Morning, everybody. How was your weekend? Mostly good? Mostly good? There are fewer of you in here than normal. I recognize that student life has put a, a few of your uh, classmates into self-isolation. Um, as many of you are aware, this last week we saw uh, a few more cases on campus that have necessitated us putting uh, more students in self-isolation. Of course, I'm sure that you recognize that, that this is uh, not just happening at Cairn, this is a national trend and other institutions that we're talking to are, are seeing cases rise. Um, I am happy to report that of those students that we uh, know who, who have received positive COVID tests, uh, few if any are experiencing uh, serious symptoms. Um, but uh, certainly keep your, your classmates and your friends uh, in, in prayer, uh, stay vigilant, um, masks, the social distancing, these, these procedures uh, will not just uh, help uh, prevent you from getting COVID, they actually may very well prevent us from having to put you into self-isolation. One week until Thanksgiving, we can do it, right? Yes, okay. Um, I know this is hard. I don't know how many of you guys know this. I'm a student too. And I had a really hard time. Normally I, I, try, to, I try to cram all my studying in to Saturdays. And this Saturday, I had a really, really hard time focusing on my studies with everything else that was going on. And I, I, I can imagine on some level, and on some level I can't, just, just how challenging it is for you guys right now to stay focused on your studies with everything else that's going on. Um, just remind yourself there are things within your control and there are things outside of your control. Those things that are in your control, be faithful, be wise, be good stewards of your time. And those things that are outside of your control, place them at the feet of our Savior. Um, this is not always easy, but as my encouragement, um, you are called right now to be, to be a student, and I know that's challenging, but do your best to focus on your studies to finish out as best you can in this very unusual, unusual semester. Um, by way of a reminder, uh, I hope that you have all seen or at least heard that uh, one of the things we are doing is extending Thanksgiving break. So it's going to be for that entire week. Uh, so we are canceling classes on Monday and Tuesday for all traditional classes, which should be most of the classes that, that you are in. Uh, so we extend the, the break a little bit to give you all a bit more of a reprieve. We recognize that, that, that you all need a bit of a reprieve right now. Um, we're also going to use that time to, to do some deep cleaning on campus and some other things uh, just to make sure that we, we can really finish that last stretch between Thanksgiving break and Christmas break well. Also, just a reminder, um, we would love to have you guys back on campus. We love having you here. Uh, we recognize the value of face-to-face -face learning. Um, the Christmas festiv festivities are, are going to happen. They're gonna look a little different, but you can already see we're decorating campus. So we have every hope that you guys are back, but we also understand that for many of you, uh, logistically or for health reasons, it's going to make more sense for you to, to finish out the semester remote. And again, as much as we'd love to have you back, we would understand that decision and just know that we, we're more than happy to accommodate that. Okay. Um, and hopefully you saw that communication coming out from our, from our provost. Um, by way of a, uh, another reminder, um, again, Thanksgiving break, and we normally have a Thanksgiving chapel. We're not gonna have the Thanksgiving chapel this year, um, but that doesn't mean we're, it's because we're not thankful. There's much to be thankful for. Um, and, uh, and so just as we enter this, uh, this season of Thanksgiving, my hope and prayer is that you are all able to spend some time in, in, uh, in contemplative thankfulness uh, towards the Lord, uh, towards his steadfast mercy for you. I also uh, just remind you of, of one opportunity to express that thankfulness. So the food drive, don't forget, the food drive is continuing uh, through Wednesday. So each hall needs to bring in 100 items. Uh, check the box uh, in your hall for more info. And then on Thursday, Karen's Day of Giving, will pack the boxes of the 100, uh, for the 100 families 
At lunch, we'll write them notes, and starting at 3 p.m., you can drop by the lower level of the MAC to pack, uh, to, to pack one box. Uh, this, is, this is how you know, we get to, to love our, our city and to, um, uh, to care for our, our, our city and all this. So uh, let me go to the, the Lord in prayer, and then I'm going to read a passage of Scripture and introduce our speaker. Lord, we are thankful uh, there is uh, much that is weighing on our minds now. Uh, we are um, worried and concerned for our friends and our colleagues, our classmates uh, who are in self-isolation, especially those who are feeling symptomatic. Uh, but we know that you are the great physician, and we are so thankful for your steadfast love and mercy towards your people, towards this institution. Uh, we are thankful that you are the God that has a healing hand. And Lord, we pray that you would stretch out that healing hand now on uh, those students who are feeling sick, your protective hand uh, on uh, those of us who are, are trying to be faithful uh, to our studies, to the tasks that you have called us to at this time. Uh, Lord, uh, help us to stay focused. Uh, Lord, uh, we pray uh, for the professors uh, as well uh, who are, are navigating this with us, Lord. Uh, Lord, uh, bless each and every one of them, keeping them healthy. Uh, Lord, I pray that as a community, you would allow us to finish this semester well um, so that we might have as much opportunity as possible to spend the time together to learn more about your word and your world. Lord, we pray also for our speaker today. We pray that you would give her a wisdom as she opens uh, God's word uh, to us all. Uh, we pray these things in your son's name. If you have your Bible, uh, please join with me to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. If you've got the Karen Bible, let's see, it looks like page 926. Yes, thank you. 926 in the Karen Bible. So, and that's uh, 17, and we're going to read uh, verses 24 through 28, part of a, Paul's address. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation and mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being as even some of our own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Let me introduce you to our speaker today. She has an MS in counseling from Cairn University, a BA in East Asian Studies from Middlebury College. She is a licensed professional counselor and is currently serving as the director of Oasis Counseling Services and as an assistant professor in the School of Liberal Arts and Sciences here. Her areas of academic interest include traumatology and attachment-based therapies and work with individuals, couples, and families. She maintains a private counseling practice. Outside of the classroom, she enjoys the arts, film, reading, long walks, and gathering with friends and family over tea, although maybe not as much these days in a COVID world. Maybe a little bit, not quite as much, okay, yeah. Uh, she has uh, advanced certification in Mandarin Chinese. I did not know, that's pretty cool. She is married to James and is the mother of two young adult sons. Please join me in welcoming Kim Jetter to the stage. Thank you for having me. It's uh, really good to be here. One thing for certain, this year is like no other. Can anyone say amen to that? <laughs> it is like no other. 
And, you know, I think about, we think about COVID-19, we think about racial and social unrest, you know, um, we think about the elections and then and the holidays are coming up. There is just so much and it's, there's a weight and we're carrying that weight. And it reminds me of an experience that I had over 30 years ago when I was a student studying in Taiwan, where we had some groups of students that went snorkeling. And it was during monsoon season. And so we're all snorkeling together. It's a beautiful day. And then the skies just opened up and it felt like someone was dumping buckets of water out. So there was wind, there was torrential rain, there was an undertow, and there were three of us that were kind of swimming together. There were several groups of students and there were three of us that were together. And coming up, trying to come up for air, and really, it was really hard to get air because of all the water that was, the deluge of water that was coming at us. Um, and the one, there was one other, there was a guy and another um, friend of mine. And so the three of us were swimming and unbeknownst to me, he was taking a, the brunt of um, what we were facing with the currents and like hitting against the rocks. And so eventually, you know, we came up, tried to get air. We looked towards the shore. We tried to keep our eye towards the shore and eventually we did make it to the shore. Um, but when we got there, shortly after, the skies opened and the sun came back out. But for us, we were so shaken. Like we, we could barely catch our breath and it was hard to adjust, even though we knew we were on shore and it was safe. And I feel like this year sometimes feels like we've been faced and hit with monsoon after monsoon after monsoon. And it's important that we recognize that, that we're in this space where, you know, if, even if you think of a sponge that's submersed in water, even if it's only 50% submersed, that water is seeping up to the top. And so you start to reach a saturation point where it feels like it's hard to take anything else in. And so part of the reason I wanted to talk about that is sometimes we can get so ingrained and so involved in our schedules that we keep, we don't rest. We, we say, rest, what's that? I'm too busy to rest. Um, there's a song by Stevie Wonder that's called, I'll Be Loving You Always. And he said that some of life's troubles can, can make us feel at times that we wished we were born in another time or place. And then he goes on to say that God knew exactly where he wanted you to be placed. And, and that's why I chose that passage of scripture. Like it, it was no surprise to God that in 2020 we would be facing all of the things that we're facing right now. You know, they, these, you've probably heard that saying, has it ever occurred to you that nothing ever occurs to God? So he chose you, he chose me, he chose everyone that's a part of this caring community to be present at this time and to happily seek after him in this time for the things that we need of him. Um, you know, you think about stress, right? You have your regular responsibilities and everything else that's going on in the backdrop. And stress can take a lot out of us. Um, and I don't know how many of you, are, there's, there's two kinds of stress. Right? There's stress that is considered you stress. And what you stress is, it's something that you've signed up for. So all of you signed up to do an academic program here. You chose your major. You signed up for that. Um, sometimes if you are engaged in a particularly intense physical regimen, you've signed up for that. So you, in signing up for that, you prepare yourself a certain way. You stay nourished, you stay hydrated, you get enough rest because you know for this 90 day period, you're gonna be involved in some intense academic physical exercise. Distress, on the other hand, is when we're faced with things that we did not sign up for. 
and that can be overwhelming. And we have to keep that. And who signed up for COVID-19 in a global pandemic? None of us. And we have to keep that. Who signed up for all of the unrest we're having in our country around race and um, injustice? And yet here we are. And God knew that each of us would be born in this time and here at this time. So, and what is he wanting from us in this? Um, we think about rest, and I think about Sabbath rest. And Sabbath rest means to cease or to stop. We need to take time to, to pause from the things that we're engaged in and really be reminded of who God is who we are in relationship to him, how he views us, how he views the people in our lives, and how do we connect with him in meaningful ways. Um, some of you may be familiar with the book Emotionally Healthy Spirituality by Pete Scazzaro. And he uses an example in that book about a group in the 1800s that was trying to travel from one side of the United States to to the West Coast. And their goal was to reach their destination before the winter storms and the cold set in. And as they were in this process and in, in this journey, um, there, there was a schism that developed between two groups within the camp. And one group was really worried that they wouldn't make it to California, to the West Coast, before the storms hit and said, and they took umbrage with the group that wanted to stop on Sundays for the Sabbath. So what they decided was that they would split. And one group said, we're gonna travel seven days because we wanna get there and we are not gonna take any chances. The other group said, you do that. We're gonna stop on Sundays, have time to worship have time to connect with our families and time to rest. And the group that decided they were not gonna observe the Sabbath said, well, we'll see you when you get there. Well, not only did the group that stopped for the Sabbath get there first, the, the way that they got there in community was very different. You know, and the, dif the difference was that the families had time to connect and to rest and be present with one another. The horses had time to rest so that they were strengthened for the journey. Um, child, the children had a chance to play and, and just enjoy um, the beauty of God's earth and, and being with people that they cared about. The other group did not fare as well. There was huge discord and unrest between families. And um, they actually arrived after the first group. So there's a reason that God calls us to, to rest and the reason that he put that principle into place for us to follow. Uh, Mark, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter six, verses 30 to 33, we see an example with the apostles where the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he, Jesus, said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went by themselves in a boat to a solitary place, but many who saw them leaving, recognized them, and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. And I wonder if some of you feel that way sometimes, that there's so little time for respite and for rest, that you're just squeezed between one thing after the other. And yet Jesus said, come with me to a quiet place to rest. That was an important invitation, and it's a reminder to, to us 
of what God is calling us to. Um, saying I'm too busy to rest, we're too busy not to rest. Because a little can go a long way. So it's important to have that time to, to rest. And that rest is in Jesus, that how do I remember him and stay focused and anchored in him? So there's, I wanted to also share with you a passage from Psalms. Who knows, Psalms is the best prayer book ever around. And we can bring all of our, our, the range of our emotions that we're feeling and pour it out to God and he can handle all of it. He doesn't say, you shouldn't feel that way. He knows what we're going through. You know, and, he, and he encourages us to, to teach us to number our days that we may apply ourselves to his wisdom. So what does that look like for us to do that? So Psalm 27, four, and I'd encourage you to go back and read the whole psalm, it's a wonderful psalm. But it says, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. To behold the beauty of the Lord, that means we need to take time to stop and see and reflect on God's goodness. What are some of the ways that you naturally connect with God? Everybody's different. You know, there are some of you who might get up at five o'clock in the morning and you spend an hour daily going through um, doing your Bible study. For some of you, that doesn't come, it doesn't come for you the same way, that connection with God. For some of you, it's out being out in nature. So how are you making time to actually get out and do a prayer walk, just to kind of be alone with God and to connect with him and remember why you're here and what your purpose is. Psalm 119, 18 says, open my eyes, Lord, that I may see wonderful things in your law. So, so often when things are heavy and busy in our lives, we take our eyes and our focus off of Jesus. And, you know, when I think back to that experience that I had in Taiwan, you know, coming up for air to breathe, banding together with my fellow students so that we could get to shore together and keeping our eye on the shore, those are some of the things that are helpful for us now. Who are the people in our life that we can count on no matter what, that'll remind us of the things that matter and to help remind us of what shore is. And I'll say, in this time we're in, sometimes it feels like the shore keeps being pushed out further and further. So it's important to remember what the shore really is for us as followers of Christ. It's something that can't be moved or, or shaken by external circumstances. It's an anchor and a hope that resides not in temples made by hands, but in temples made by God. You know, the, there's a principle as you look through scripture that if a purpose of, the purpose of a thing is not clearly understood, abuse is inevitable, inevitable. And by abuse, I mean abnormal use. So what does it look, what does, observing the Sabbath, how is that taken to heart in your life? How are you incorporating Sabbath in your daily routine and in your weekly routine? And recognizing the weight of the things that you're carrying right now, that we're all carrying. And what is God's love requiring of you in response to the things that you're faced with? So I would encourage all of you to remember to breathe and decompress. What does that look like for you? To band together with people that you know care for you, have your back, are in your corner. 
and that will remind you of what the shore is and what safe harbor is. Um, and if you're not necessarily certain how you most connect with God naturally, I would encourage you to look at the spiritual pathways assessment and, and just kind of, and connect with, learn more about how you connect with God and to incorporate that, find ways to incorporate that into your, your daily experience. So I wanna thank you for being here today and I'd like to close out our time in the word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for how good you are. We thank you that you are not unfeeling. You know what we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis and you care. Help us to be able to bring to you all of the things that we're faced with, the daily responsibilities, the holidays coming up, um, academics, when it just seems too hard to concentrate. Help us to say earlier in the process, Lord, I need you, rather than later. And we ask you, Lord, to help us see you ourselves and others from your point of view. Bless us to be a blessing and help us to walk in love. In Jesus' name, amen.